your boots. Today's the day. Oh, sinners, have you slaughtered the land? Oh, sinners, have you slaughtered the land? It's eternal damnation, lest you wash in the blood. Get your gun, get your knife, lace your boots. The time has come. your boots and send them home. I'll be a singer all of my days. I'll be a singer all of my days. I ain't waiting for Jesus. He's left us alone. Get your gun, get your knife, lace your boots. The seed's been sown. Get your knife, lace your boots. Today's the day. Oh, sinners, have you slaughtered the land? Oh, sinners, have you slaughtered the land? It's eternal damnation, lest you wash in the blood. Get your gun, get your knife, lace your boots. Time has come. There's presents on fire, and I lit the match. There's prisons on fire, and I lit the match. We all want our freedom Not just to break stone Get your gun, get your knife, lace your boots and send them home I'll be a sinner All of my days I'll be a sinner All of my days I ain't waiting for Jesus 
he's left us alone Get your gun, get your knife, lace your boots The seed's been sown thought um we're gonna talk about but wait there's more uh we what have <laughs> two people today well i'm i'm sort of like here and it, it's, come it's, up. it's a bit cozy because we had lots of videos to show you and it's just easier with the computer and like now we can show you even more cool stuff that we know how to use vlc properly ha <laughs> ha um but yeah we're gonna talk about some other additional stuff that is not uh talked about before and uh, we got actually quite some stuff still, uh, surprisingly enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also got two gentlemen here. We got Sven yeah. uh, and we got Dennis. Uh, and you guys have, we have seen both of you. Yes. Yeah, we already seen so I mean, Dennis. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Heatmap, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I was curious if we had one for the 1.0 streams. Yeah, I think we had yeah. for 1.0 as well. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, uh, I guess we're just going to dive into the, but wait, there's more uh, yeah. developer live stream for 1.0. Uh, and uh, let's just go into the content. So, yeah, uh, so, so basically, I mean, we've had a couple of streams. This is like stream number five now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot. Of uh, so we've covered quite a lot of things, some some of them being quite a surprise, like last week's uh, Teams of Three announcement. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we have a couple more things. and uh, We're now going to have Teams of Three. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Um, so what we want to talk about today is basically just uh, a number of smaller topics, but also important topics that uh, we haven't really found like the room to kind of like squeeze into the other streams and like to not have like one which lasts another 2.5 hours. <laughs> we kind of separate them a little bit. So today is more about uh, like uh, the tertiary layer of, of, of new features. And uh, it's it's quite a lot of things that have come together. So I think the work in progress, uh, like change log that we've kind of come start compiling and putting together at least has been like around 26 pages alone yeah. 26 <laughs> pages if you export into word document just like unstructured obviously but there is a lot of stuff that we have and well, yeah i think it's the biggest i mean obviously it's the biggest it's by far i know so definitely yep. definitely yep one. yep so uh let's get started let's show a little bit more what's Without in store ado. yeah i mean go ahead the new tutorial yeah so with 1.0 we are doing yet another update on the tutorial. As you remember, with 6.0, we already have improved the tutorial quite a bit as well already. Um, like the way people are being eased into the game, adding new contextual hints, making mm -hmm. sure that like uh, new players just find, find like, their, their footing a bit easier and just have a step into the game uh, without too much trouble. And we thought we can do even better. And we did, hopefully. So yeah. Sven, take it away. So uh, yeah, I mean, what we, I mean, obviously the onboarding was always a problem in our environment, right? You have to get familiar with the control there was we have different types of AI different types of challenges then on top the AI and, and I mean each AI type is kind of tricky to handle and then the other players on top yeah. right I mean even in the uh, low skill player bracket there are, yeah there is a chance of encountering other players which makes the entire onboarding experience really complicated right yes. and we streamlined we streamlined that and said okay let's do it just offline you're playing alone yes. so you can focus yourself on the on the onboarding on, on learning the, uh, yeah. on learning on learning getting familiar with the weapons the controls the mission flow itself right and yeah that was i yeah. think i mean a great achievement right getting that nailed so the first step that we have there now is that we actually have an offline tutorial exactly. that's a takeaway here i mean it is actually funny because like there's still quite a lot of people that like were playing for a while and they were like i'm prestige too and i didn't even know i could do a down aim down sight with this button combination <laughs> It has happened. Um, All right, so but let's let's maybe break this down a little bit. Like, what does a new tutorial actually include? Maybe let's start with the first step. Yeah, I mean, uh, first step is I mean that you um, 
you don't have to recruit a hunter anymore, right? You pick out of one out of uh, four pre-defined classes, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, the the Vinny guy, the short range guy, then uh, uh, the crossbow mm -hmm. class, silencer guy, the, the, the yeah. silencer guy, right? And you, you already have a pre-equipped hunter, right? And you just pick the class and you start straight away. Yeah, so what you can what you can do with this, like. Um, There's like a knife. There's a med kit. So make sure there's a couple. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's a couple of traits that usually are are traits that help you survive, yeah. especially against the AI with bleeding, poison, yeah. etc. Improving so, the survivability. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. we want to kind of kickstart the play a little bit into this by just giving him something which is a bit stronger than your normally recruited default hunter. Mm. And obviously, with the tutorial, then you have a chance to explore this hunt. And then post the tutorial, mm. you also obviously have training mode where the guy doesn't instantly get killed if you lose a round up to up to a certain rank. And uh, obviously, these hunters then give you a much stronger fighting chance during that time. Yeah. So yeah, as you start the game basically for the first time, this is the screen you will see, and it requires you to choose your first hunter. That hunter is for free, obviously, and from that point on, you can go and play the tutorial, or you can skip the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> so the important point is we don't force anyone to play the tutorial, mm -hmm. but uh, obviously the tutorial is very advantageous. Like um, We talk about a little bit maybe what the tutorial actually has different compared to the regular yeah. play session. So okay. let's assume we have started to play the tutorial. Okay. First of all, you get uh, nice loading screens, right? Now uh, we are basically highlighting the important mission beats yeah. for starters, right? That you know what you're you're hunting, right? What you have to do within the mission already while loading the map. Yeah, that's I think the, the big change, right? I'll make ourselves move a little like bit so they can I've, see it. I've been moved around. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, obviously, we are start still locating the target, right? Killing the target, banishing and extracting the bounty yeah. token. You get the main, I mean, beats, the, the yeah. main beats, get, cle get clearly communicated to, to a starter just, I mean, to get to get the objective across, right? What yeah. you have to do if you start the mission. Yeah. Then if you're in the mission, or, right? Mm -hmm. So we basically thought, well, let's uh, focus on, only on one part of the map. The problem is, obviously, on a 1K by 1K map, It's very complex, right? We have complex structures like Reeker. So, and we said, let's restrict the area. Let's focus on one area where we can streamline the entire flow yeah. a little bit, right? Where it's where easy we, to learn. Where it's easy to learn, where you can easily navigate, right? Where you have clear landmarks. And basically, we spawn the players on on on. In, in, it's still it's still random, so it's not fully scripted, right? Yeah. There's still a system, systemic approach behind it. It's the mission as you know it, basically. E right? Exactly. So even the the spawn points are randomized, the extraction points are randomized, but in a controlled environment, right? Yeah. We want to we want to control the onboarding in a way, right? So basically, if I can I use the cursor here, which yeah, we will see. Yeah. So whatever you see as a red zone, this is just not accessible. So exactly. basically, if you if you would ever come to the corner here to the border, you would see what you would see in quick play, right? It's in just, it's, play, it's, it's like the red red wall. Yeah. You just can't go through this in this case. Yeah, but without getting damaged. Exactly. Right? It's just it's just a border, yeah. and it makes sure that you kind of stay within the southwestern okay. half or or like a quarter of the map. And uh, gonna go systemically still from compound to compound, mm -hmm. uh, zone gray out based on on yeah. you taking your bounty yeah. and everything else working at it. But there's 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 more to the map also. Like uh, yeah, I mean, in addition to that, we thought, I mean, let's let's rebalance it a little bit, right? Yeah. That it gets a bit easier. Right, we removed specific types of AI. For example, you won't encounter a water devil, right, or a hive, or I mean, emulators, the, 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 or emulators. <laughs> yeah, in the tutorial, maybe a nice challenge, but mm -hmm. yeah, basically we uh, we rebalance the difficulty for the yeah. for the tutorial a lot. So, so rather, I mean, we have more. I mean, less. AI overall, yeah, yeah. But, and we basically uh, um, controlling the types of AI. There's also like the the whole mission, as we mentioned before, is an offline mission. Yeah. So so which means basically you will be definitely alone on that mission. Yeah. You won't be able to find other place. What we've mm -hmm. been doing in the past, since we couldn't really do offline play, yeah. mm -hmm. um, is that we we had to basically give you a server, and then whoever else was also trying to go through a tutorial could end up in your same session, yeah. but only like those people. So obviously everybody would be very fresh at the game, but mm -hmm. that doesn't stop them from each killing like killing 
each other still and yeah. possibly having mm. a negative impact on the tutorial. Yeah. Now this has changed. So now you're completely offline, offline is and offline. you are in control of the pacing. You can you can basically explore. You can try to follow the mission, mission beats, understand this, and uh, therefore maybe have a better reliable mm. way of understanding what the mission does from first to last step. Yeah. There's, there's more to it though also, because obviously we don't, we don't have to wait for other players, so we can take control, for example, of the time it takes to banish, just shorten this for the purpose of the tutorial, because obviously there's no one coming to attack you. Um, so just to get the point yeah. across yeah. and uh, make sure that, that you kind of get easier through this yeah. experience yeah. and learn the, the yeah, basically that, the, the ropes. Yeah, and we control the backtracking a little bit, right, by, for, by pushing the extraction points in specific areas, yeah. the spawn points, just to have a nice journey, so if you stop playing the game. Right? Exactly. So when you come out of this tutorial, though, you might ask yourself, like, okay, well, if it's offline, I mean, can I somehow, like, farm this? Can I exploit this? Can I, like, make all the money before <laughs> I play, like, a regular mission? No, you can't. Uh, <laughs> um, so basically, how this happen, how this works is that we want to give you a chance to also replay the tutorial we want you to to kind of like decide when you feel you're ready like before it was kind of like this one to three rank gated type of thing yeah. um, and we completely removed that so you will not progress during the tutorial you will not rank up to the tutorial in a, in, a, in a bigger way what we do however is is that the mission when you end it still gives you a score so there's going to be some xp there's going to be some stuff like it doesn't count against That's like achievements that I just yeah. saw. <laughs> and What's important here is that if you're not happy with the outcome of the tutorial, like let's assume, for example, you still died. Yeah. Maybe AI got a lucky hit on you. <laughs> could, ha <laughs> could happen. <laughs> it's not the first time. Uh, happens to the best of us. Um, then you can also just replay the tutorial. You yeah. can replay it over and over and over again. However, only the round you've played last. So let's assume you've played the tutorial five times. Only mm. that last session is when you say, okay, no, confirm, I, I want to continue now is what you get uh, yeah. score-wise. Like yeah. nothing before will be like kept or discarded. Oh, oh, okay. So you can kind of kind of use the tutorial really to play like for as long as you want until you feel confident that you want to move on. Because the moment you move on, you instantly get your ELO ranking, which means you will matchmake with other players. You instantly can play all the contracts, quick play, mm -hmm. uh, bounty hunt, everything is available to mm -hmm. you at rank one, mm -hmm. and you're now in the wild, and obviously. Yeah, but you're still in the bracket. And of exactly. Yeah, so and you're, you're still obviously inside the training mode. And the yeah. training mode is also receiving a bit of a change with this. Mm -hmm. Because before, what we had to uh, basically was that you would need to uh, rely on the training mode to actually do the real understanding of the game. Now, th for that reason, we kind of stretched it out to, I think it was like rank 15. So at the moment you reached rank 16, you would mm -hmm. be out of that safe mm -hmm. zone. This has been adjusted a little bit now so that we now have this, this completely independent tutorial you can replay. We said that uh, the training mode is going to get uh, reduced to the first 10 ranks. So at rank 11, it's when basically you start losing your hunters and have all the regular rules apply to you. But it still gives you this extended safety yeah. period. Then I have one, because uh, I'm curious, because can you kickstart your money or XP by doing the tutorial? Um, you certainly can, um, uh, you will, you, you, lot, right? but it will just be from that one session, right? Yeah. It's one bounty token you can extract and there's a bit of AI you can farm for XP, obviously, if you want, but uh, it's it's more meaningful to actually learn the mechanics rather than to like get kickstarted into like and having the best you, money situation. Can you, can you go back to the tutorial afterwards? At then? the moment not. It's something okay. we actually want to consider uh, moving forward post 1.0 that we might allow you to kind of like take advantage of this offline play for different uh, things like mm. maybe replaying the tutorial etc. Yeah. Maybe testing your current hunter a little bit. Yeah. But it's something we still need to formulate and see in what capacity this makes sense. At the moment, the moment you skip the tutorial, you finish the tutorial and you say like, okay, that's it. Then you can't go back no. basically it's a it's a yeah. one-time onboarding experience okay, okay. all right okay. that's a tutorial yeah move on to the next slide one point improvement yeah in a go you, 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 mean, you, you i mean do you want to highlight the problem first yeah or? yeah yeah so the problem <laughs> spawning is the problem <laughs> do you want to highlight the problem <laughs> um one of the biggest issues we have at the moment is that by definition people are entering the bu from the border from the edge and that means with like the amount of players we have in the game, which recently got updated to two more, <laughs> um, we do have the issues of sometimes neighboring kind of encountering each other rather mm -hmm. early in the yeah, game. Yeah. I think, the, I mean, we have a system in place which is basically full of randomization, yes. right? Everything is random. The player spawns are random. 
the extraction points are random, the target locations are random, the resupply stations uh, are random, and sometimes we have weird setups, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, having all, all a lot of teams in one corner, right next to the target location, which is not ideal. I think everybody understands exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. So, and uh, we th we thought we have to improve that, right? We we still want to keep that unknown thing right that there is still the low chance of having the target nearby right yeah. or having or having a neighbor or having a neighbor right but overall i think it, i mean it's quite obvious right we had to improve the rules of propagating the players on the map right yes and what we did is i mean as a, we have basically two rules so one of the rules is, I mean, evenly distributing the players. That's, for example, here you have first shot how the uh, system now distributes the player across the maps. That's one of the worst case scenarios already, 10 solo players, mm -hmm. right? So the green rings is basically uh, where people would spawn. Exactly. So and the system tries to keep a neighbor free. So obviously it's still... Yeah, yeah, that doesn't, that it, doesn't always work, right? I mean, no, no, that, that, it, it's still, <laughs> as being said, right, there should be a random yes. chance of having a neighbor, right? We don't want to to ensure that, that 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 you that you can rely on not exactly. having something exactly. nearby, but, but yeah, there will the, be twelve solo players. But there, at least for ten players, there's a high chance that you get into the first count on without encountering. Oh, but it could could happen. It could, right? which, it could. which is fine. It's what we want. It's just we want <laughs> exactly. to make sure that so it doesn't happen as a default. Yeah, exactly. So that's one system, right? Distributing the the players across the uh, the the. Uh, the map having some space in between. The other rule is trying to uh, um, have no player spawns next to the target, right? Which is the target. The target area is highlighted there, and it tries to keep the player spawns right next to the players uh, to the target spawn free. Yeah. Right. Which means for ten players, it already tries to squeeze all the other player spawns because we have twenty spawns on the map. A bit closer together, obviously, then we have more the problem of um, neighbors being occupied by a team, right? Exactly. That gets even uh, um, like more obvious more with uh, 12 players now. If, worst case, if we have uh, 12 solo players on the map, right, then obviously a lot of slots would be occupied. But uh, as being said, so around the target, there won't be any uh, any team. Yes. So and that yeah for two would obviously work for two target mission as well. Again, that's one of those uh, edge cases where could happen that the tier uh, the team is nearby. That's exactly what we want to have, right? That unknown behavior of is could still happen, right? I mean, all of these examples, obviously, we we kind of like took into account like the worst case scenario, which is like mm. a lot of teams in the mm. same session. I mean, for the most part, what you will see is obviously teams are like duos or with a new update trios. Mm. So that kind of means you have even more space that you can use for, for mm. buffering in between. Yeah. Mm. Right. So the examples here, they are like almost the worst case scenarios, mm. like if there's lots of teams, but on average, usual typical sessions, you have a few amount of teams because they have their partners with yeah. them, etc. And that gives the system a lot more room to breathe, mm. actually. Mm. But I mean, one thing which should be mentioned, right? We still keep the old system. Yes. Right. That's a new system, and the new system runs in parallel. And mm -hmm. we're gonna mix the old system with the new system, right? That that, that we basically get all the nice variations out of yeah. both. That, roles, that also right? gives us a better data to yeah. understand, yeah. like, okay, is the new system working as intended? Yeah. How does it measure, yeah. etc. And then we can we can with over time also decide to what ratio we're gonna yeah. shift this. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. That's yeah. really good stuff. Yeah. Then let's move on to the next topic. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that we've talked about, uh, I think in a couple of streams already, uh, yeah. mentioned that also uh, when we had our Xbox game preview launch. Yeah, and in general, it's been something that's been requested for a while. Yes. Right? Not a lot of people, yes. but yes. there are definitely people, uh, especially people that have like, uh, you know, in issues with their hands or they can't use a proper keyboard. So I think it's, it's, it's really it's good. It's great for, for accessibility. Exactly. Um, so basically what it means is like we we kind of in supported this indirectly already so people yeah. could kind of use like like some third party tools where i try to remap the buttons somehow it would work it would work natively because of the engine supporting it um, but now we've done it properly and this obviously is development that has uh, has come over from from working on on, on the console version of the game and uh, we've done like a lot of like testing with uh, the game preview and got feedback etc so what we see here already is the next iteration of our controller support exactly. and that obviously will carry over into console 
with 1.0 and will be very likely be on game preview like a little bit earlier to that as well exactly. um now what does it mean it does not mean for example that there will be aim assist on pc right we, we don't have any of these mechanics that obviously are needed for for a console experience to to kind of like create unfair situations or just like make things feel weird uh for for uh your mouse keyboard uh, user base, which is the majority of how you guys will play. Yeah. Um, but there is now the support with a bit more control uh, about customization, etc., for the controller. So I think this will be appreciated by lots of people who really like enjoying like playing with a controller or just have to do it because they just can't handle mouse keyboard. Um, and also maybe it will be interesting already as a sneak peek for all the console people that are watching today of how this will move forward onto for, the Xbox yeah, and exactly. uh, like the, the, the console branches. Because for them it's been a pretty big topic obviously, yeah. the controller uh, and how we're using the aim assist and stuff like that. So it is uh, all for both. Uh, so yeah. we got... So let's, let's look at the supporting material. A video. So I'm going to talk a little bit over this video. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so so basically, what we've been doing with the controller support is so we've talked uh, and looked into specifically like how the uh, controller acceleration is working, how the aim assist is working. We've added lots more additional options to this one. Um, so I think we're gonna pause this after we've played through once, and then we go step yeah. by step. So what you can do now is you can have a lot more granular control about how. You can kind of like uh, have different axes separated. You have more control about how the acceleration is ramping up so that you can really tailor the, mm -hmm. the, the, the controller input to what you prefer as a player. Right? You can customize it, personalize it, um, and just have the whole thing a bit more granular. What you also see is like you can actually have like a, like a more granular uh, sliders where you have a chance to really fine tune this rather than steps of like uh, not, uh, dot uh, one, two, et cetera. You can actually go even more granular. And uh, yeah, it gives you a lot more more options in order to to make this feel very nice and smooth. And it also includes outside of the PC realm, obviously customization options for for aim assist. So you can disable aim assist. You can have a bit more a bit more control. Like if you really wanted the true input, you can do that. And aim assist isn't interfering with your aiming. Um, on PC, obviously that option doesn't exist because there's no aim assist. But on Xbox, but on yeah. Xbox uh, there is or will be. That yeah, will be the option. So yeah, if you want to go through it, you can. Yeah, yep. just uh, so we can maybe. No. Oh, you want to go to the next one? Yeah, we can go to the next one right okay. away. It's fine. So then, also, what we have is actually a extra video. Another video, which is um, the the people playing uh, on on console, they probably recognize this. This is the is the item wheel. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a there there is a feature that exists, which is programmable hot slots, basically quick slots. So what you can do with that is. Um, you can take d-pad left, d-pad right, and you can see like it's the first on the left side. I'm using the mouse cursor here. On the left side, the the first uh, tools category slot, this one here, or the first uh, consumable uh, category slot. In this case here, they have like a d-pad hotkey button. So what you can do is you can quickly go, for example, to your knife or your med mm. kit or whatever you want, just with the press of a button without having to navigate the menu, which obviously is very convenient if you want to quickly go to your knife to take out the grunt that you stirred up there. Exactly. Um, now on the Xbox game preview at the moment, these buttons are fixed. Yeah. Like, so it's always the first of each of the categories. And that's uh, something which we're not really happy with. So with the next iteration, and it's coming first, obviously, with this now rollout of the controller uh, PC support, but mm -hmm. we'll also come to, to, to Xbox's next step, is that you can reprogram this. So let's just watch this video here. As you can see, uh, these hot, uh, the quick select buttons basically being remapped to specific slots there just by like selecting an item holding the button down for for like a second mm. it kind of like quickly readjust them to different slots so it's really down to what you yeah. want to do before you could only ever have a tool and a con one consumable yeah. now you can have it on both tools yeah. or both consumables yeah. really up to you yeah really nice feature so it just makes the whole thing a lot more more like usable exactly. and user friendly yeah. it's a quality of life improvement yeah, it's really nice, especially, I mean, I already see some someone mention, oh, we should get this on PC. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it's great that we do stuff like that because like I see a lot of people like, why would you play on controller? But there are people that don't have disabilities and with yeah. this, they might be able to play the game, which would, you know, be and, good. And making this game also on console kind of gives us these features for PC for free. So why not exactly. use it? Exactly. Right? Exactly. It's not like we have to do extra work anyways. And it's... That's a bit of extra, but not much. I mean, as much <laughs> as it was just, obviously. Okay. But, um, no, we don't have only controller input today. 
um, we <laughs> unplugged the aircon. It actually hasn't moved. Good that you yeah, say it. maybe it's maybe so it was the correct it. plug. Let's see. Let's, let's <laughs> maybe also we did something else wrong now, so we'll see the consequences in half an hour. Let's let's see. Let's see. <laughs> if we all don't go live, and you're, oh no, why is the camera doing this? No, if we all die. See, that's the AC probably because uh -oh. the AC. <laughs> uh oh, I'm feeling. I'm scared. This is going to be the end of this, isn't it? This is how we end. Oh no. Are we there? Are we there? <sighs> it's because you mentioned it, right? It's, that's the only reason. It really why is. Yeah. I just I saw myself, and then I was like, <laughs> no. "Hello." Okay. No, it's laggy. Bit laggy. Time. Oh no! There we are. There we are. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh right, so, no! It's still stuttering. No. I think it might be just because we have some. Well, the last time we had it on the couch, the camera, right? That was the problem. Yeah, we just I think reset it's the just camera there. This PC, it's not yeah. the strongest. Uh, <sighs> this is like. And the, is the mic muted? No. We're some, not muted. Someone is saying the mic is muted. It's because they're joking. Damn it! Why would you do this to us? <laughs> no, we're we're. You can actually hear us. It's just the movement that's a little bit janky sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't beat me like this. I have been streaming for a few years. Mike is not muted. We can hear you loud and clear. Exactly. Uh, anyways, uh, let's continue with the video. I know the webcam is weird. I don't know where. Else All right. I think let's let's we can we can go to the next one. And so there's there's more with controls. And uh, for that. Yeah. For control. No. For controls, not controllers. So what we do have as well is actually additional button mapping granularity. This is actually something we talked about for, for some time. Mm -hmm. And um, so with 1.0, what we're going to do is we have the jump and vault, for example, also available as separate keybinds so that you can actually um, just like map them on different buttons if you prefer, if you're, if you're feeling confused by it being on the same button by default. And the same is true. Yeah. Same is true if you go further down. I'm going to just run the video here. If you scroll further down, now he scrolls further down. You can do the same with interacting, bandaging, and stop burning. So like that, the use button and actually stopping, for example, like bleeding damage, etc., can be put on different buttons. So it's a small quality of life improvement, mm -hmm. but it's something which kind of helps uh, a lot for people who really like to prefer to have them on separate buttons. Something we, I think, we promised this for the better part of a year for now. Quite some time. I know a lot of people want this. So so we now we now have that in the and uh, like yeah I mean again this is this the stream with all the smaller tertiary things so we're kinda happy that we can roll out like these small things as well along with a 1.0 update. Exactly. Um, some additional I think lots of people would actually appreciate like changes like that uh, just because it just gives them that granularity for customizing their controls which they usually don't have. Exactly. I'm just trying to figure out why. It's yeah. So <laughs> I don't want to know Is it affecting the video in the background as well? Just no, us? it's the video is fine. It's just webcam. It's like, it's just, just like okay. I don't know. All right, like then um, we I think we can go back to the slides actually and put it right. Yes, we can. We can. So that was controls. We have more. Multiple region support. Now, what does this mean? Um, multiple region support basically is uh, a useful addition for matchmaking because it allows uh, you guys to actually set up more than one region in order to uh, tell the system where you prefer playing. And what does this means in average is basically that you will encounter like sessions which have more players, and it's a good thing. So we can maybe show. I think it was the next image here. Yeah. yeah. So this is how this would look like. Actually, it's like when you when you start the game. Obviously, for the first time, you need to select your region. What you can do now is like you can select a primary region and you can uh, select a secondary region. The primary region is as before. This is where you want to spend most of the time. This is where you would like to play. But you can also choose any of the other regions as a complementary secondary region uh, and. Uh, the system will basically then also allow you to be matchmaked to sessions of their particular region. Now, obviously, like Europe and Oceania or Asia might not be the best companions, right? I mean, it's maybe not the best choice, mm -hmm. but there is a couple of like neighboring regions that we have, for mm -hmm. example, US East, US West. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for people to 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 um, consider if they want uh, to maybe play on US East primarily, but also still have the matchmaking system acknowledge US West. And that means um, for the most of the time, they will actually play on US East. But if the system is requesting players and can't find enough players in that other region um, to fill up a server, it might actually then 
request your client to be sent to the other region to fill up there. So overall, it's an improvement of quality for everybody because the sessions should just have more players in them. And you can always take and untake these uh, regions as you want. So for example, for Europe and Russia, it's actually a very nice companion. The same is true probably for Oceania and Asia, US, East, US, West. It really comes down to that where you are uh, combining like South America and maybe US East and, and just like kind of optimizing a little bit uh, of that. Obviously, it means sometimes you will end up on one area, sometimes on the other. That will have an impact on the pings naturally. So it's up to you to choose whether it is a good idea for your location where you are at or not. Yeah. Um, but you can always customize this yeah. and just it gives you a lot more uh, options and overall improves the quality of the experience for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. All right. There's all there is to be said about this. There's all there is to be said about this. <laughs> Right, then we have a couple of minor improvements, actually. Um, one thing that we've added is um, a warning for burn, burning teammates. So like if a teammate got downed, we actually show a little icon now next to the little skull icon when they're downed, right, that they're burning. So if, if someone enemy set them on fire, it gives you a clearer understanding that this has happened and do something about it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not your choice whether you want to risk it, etc. Uh, if you just run in there, quickly touch them, maybe hide behind the bush again, just as long as the fire is out, all the mechanics that we've added recently. But the biggest advantage here is that specifically people who are maybe not aware of what has happened because maybe the team is split up a little bit. Mm. One is on the other one side of a building and the yeah. other side. Yeah. And you necessarily don't hear the burning to start, like firebomb, explosion, lantern, whatever. You can still react to it. You still get that notification and maybe has the time to actually do something to save your teammate. Yeah. Um, then we also actually, and this is a rather big one. Hey, you want to talk about this one, Sven? Uh, we Did? reduce the dark side boost, right? And uh, yeah. Um, so it's five seconds now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hurry up. Yep. So this is actually actually interesting because um, it brings us a little bit back to our roots, um, to the time when we were experimenting with dark side originally, and yeah. even the time before yeah. that, where. We had a very different experience because like it was everything was a bit more unknown, etc. Mm -hmm. And granted the dark side boost was a necessity we had to put yeah. in because of the problem of people being more likely to actually camp yeah. and, and therefore the bounty carriers that then mm. successfully managed to kill the boss, banish, yeah. etc., get out. The moment they opened the door they they got killed or like exactly. it was very hard to break through this initial yeah. initial stalemate of a, of a camped okay. compound that was the initial problem and then yeah. that's why you, we explored different ways and basically the outcome was the dark side boost right? yes and then yeah. we went for like the 10 seconds yeah. because it was giving us uh, like the best of experience it made sure yeah. that newer players have a chance to actually uh, like use it because they're not they, they will not that not yet be that efficient in using just quickly tap it mm. like being very very clever yeah. with how you use it so they have a, have a chance though but we've now figured out that especially also with the teams of three mm. um, like that five seconds is actually a much much nicer time because it, it brings back some of that mystery yeah. as well it helps you to break yeah. out initially yeah but it but doesn't. You cannot rely on the the, the traversal part, right? Exactly. The, 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 the you, you, to the you, you can't use it to hunt other players yeah. down for like yeah. like uh, basically across the map. So yeah. like very often the situation was that uh, like you saw you saw a banish happen in like somewhere in the northern half of the map. I um, see a lot of people. They're like, no, why, why five? <laughs> <laughs> and other people say like, wow, well, five five cents nice, that's awesome. Well, so I guess I we're we're on one the right track there. <laughs> Um, so the good thing is that with the five seconds, um, what well, you have the situation that like there's banishing happening in a two target map, like banishing mm -hmm. happening in, in the top. The moment you now start killing the second boss and start your own banishing process, this other team might eventually come down. And what you can now rely on more is that they will actually still have to spot you because they will not have that big of a reserve, very likely, in order to, to like kind of like camp your your own banishing mm -hmm. and with their own dark yeah. side boost. So I think technically it's way more interesting. So, yeah. Question: Is it possible that we can change the dark side if they're in a team or in a solo? No. So what is something we actually made made uh, pretty clear during testing as well? Like we we don't want the amount of dark side to scale with the team size because that way it becomes a predictable element. If we say that the moment you pick up a token, it's the five seconds, you can count. And the moment you see the name banner, like mm -hmm, has picked up the bounty, you know what you're getting into. Because normally you might not understand, is this a solo, is this a duo, is this a trio? And if then you have different times, it just makes the whole thing very obfuscated, very, very hard to yeah. read. So by just saying it's a fixed amount per token, per pickup, and but now having a reduced amount so there's more coordination needed it actually feels more uh, reliable as a mechanic to you can use but also you can counter exactly 
Okay. Everyone's like, but my turn, I'm playing solo, yeah. But but um, but here here is out on this one because this is actually helping the solo players. So when we when we have been testing the the teams of three specifically, obviously the teams of three is in a constellation where you can also play as a solo against them. And what we found out is that the moment we pulled this down from 10 seconds to 5 seconds, it was very, very likely, or very easier at least, or much easier, let's put it like that, for a solo to kind of harass teams of three from unknown positions because they didn't have that huge reservoir of dark side boost in order to, to, to always pinpoint, oh look, there's a single guy over there, everybody rush this one guy, take him out. Mm. Now, you can actually operate much more from the peripheral, from the shadows, mm. use maybe a sniper rifle or just do, do it like an ambush with a shotgun at a critical mm. junction, just because there is a larger amount of, or it happens more often that you will encounter teams that have already spent their five seconds. Or just like have the last second, they want to maybe save quickly before the exit yeah. vehicle, just to be mm. extremely sure, but, mm. The gameplay is a lot more intense, but a lot so a lot fairer for the solos mm. because of that. And you have to keep in mind that only the two bounty carrier can yes. uh, uh, use the dark side, right? Yeah, so it's not the three guys because exactly. there's no three tokens. Exactly. Yes. So as a solo, actually, this is a good mechanic because most of the time you will not come up against other solos, but other teams. And for that, draining those teams faster off the dark side boost gives you more room to maneuver, room to be tactical. And yeah, check them out in clever ways. Yeah. I mean, there's one thing that people don't understand. You say teams of three should have less, but there's only two bounties, so there will not be three bounties. Exactly, exactly. Because I do think that's something people are not understanding. Because like, oh my god, but teams of three should get less! Because they're teams of three! But they already have exactly the same yeah, one as a duo because it's token-based. And yeah, yeah. with two tokens, two of three can pick up a token, but they have the same amount as a duo. So that's basically from a balancing point of view where the whole thing becomes a lot fairer. Yeah. So yeah, that's the second part. But, but then more. again, <laughs> you guys will have to test this and that's why we obviously first have a test server before we do 1.0 and then we can still you All know, the stuff eventually will be will be approachable. Exactly. Absolutely. So All right, but there's more. Uh, even more. Uh, but wait, there's a <laughs> So maybe you want to talk about that one then maybe. Uh, the loot changes to the hunter. Yeah. Um, loot changes to the hunter, yeah. <laughs> basically, no ammo anymore, right? That was the bigger thing. Yeah. We, we basically only have have uh, the restocking of the consumables and the tools, yeah. and Be the money. Before, the, before there was the random chance, right? Restocking yeah. the ammo, restocking the uh, tools, or... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, basically, the ammo was always a bit of a relic, because mm. it was there was like something that we put in back then when we didn't have weapon looting yet. Mm. So, like, since we put in a weapon looting, it kind of became a bit obsolete because mm. you could always just pick up the weapon and have something to shoot with. Mm. Mm -hmm. So um, now focusing more on the loot side, mm. we actually thought about maybe introducing like a couple additional ones. So, so you have a bit more options, uh, what you could by a little low chance, obviously, like also find on the hunters. Yeah. So like it's the moment it's like a 75 option in addition to the 50, mm. then we have 150 and we have a very, very rare option to find like a thousand it's not just 500 <laughs> as a current maximum you can also find a thousand yeah. obviously when you do that you very probably strongly think about what you want to do if you want to continue with a mission or maybe <laughs> leg it to the next exit <laughs> to save this thing and bring it home then again it may, might also be a very nice challenge to still press on anyways knowing that you get the like the, the thousand extra <laughs> okay so i see some things because you still get your you have still a chance to get your items back yes yes so so there's basically i think it's a 50 50 split between that so either you get get money again it can be between 50 and a thousand mm. with a like mm. 50 75 550 500 no 100 200 500 and a thousand so mm. what we have at the moment plus the three additional ones here um or it restocks uh, a random tool or random consumable exactly. as before but you so. won't get any ammo anymore exactly which is i think the huge improvement because i mean you find a lot of ammo in our world right? I, I mean sometimes, I, very, sometimes but but on an right. average on average is really not an issue <laughs> like so for me personally at least whenever i, I have a chance yeah. to loot a hunter and i get the ammo it feels like yeah, because I mean, I could have just gotten an ammo from his weapon exactly. or just from the box next to it. Uh, what's uh, you? You have the special ammo pack for that. Um, you can always find special ammo uh, from the from the pickup in the world, so that's perfectly fine then. But my bomb lens. You still get bomb lens ammo, but you just need to find the little purple boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, 
smaller changes here so again it's minor improvements it's like more like a doctoring um within the tools and then obviously you also have the ammo box though right yeah but that's like a choice that you that's have a to choice that's a choice and exactly it. like so do i run with a very very powerful set and rely on systemic ammunition or i mean you also can't count on killing players and getting ammunition from those um or will you bring the ammo box i see that um <laughs> Which, by the way, actually, the ammo box has been dropping in the price quite drastically. I think it went down to, I think it's 60 or 65 now. And it's so, not the money. It's more so like, it's a bit do more I take affordable. the ammo box or a dynamite bundle? Yeah, you'd like those dynamite bundles, I know. And a concertina. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but there is more, I guess. Or is there? Yeah. There is. Wow. We, you guys, you guys given us feedback and we've listened. Isn't that great? <laughs> Um, so we um, we looked at the at the tactical ping one more time and uh, specifically the feedback that you guys have given us regarding the art style. I think like most of the people actually appreciated the feature. They just felt it was a bit too sci-fi from the look, a bit like too exactly. extremely drawn lines, etc. So basically, we just redrew the lines and uh, <laughs> um, give it like a little bit more of a quick style update. So it's a bit closer to the other uh, like art style we have yeah. in the game. And it was actually pretty good feedback. And I think that uh, it feels a lot more integrated into the world right now. And I do think we have a video for that. Yeah, we do. Oh, wait. How does this work? Oh, we're not in the thing. Yeah! So as you can see now, the, the ping marker has been updated slightly. It's still a bit the same animation style, but... Yeah, but um, it's more like broad strokes, yeah. a, bit more, a bit more rough, like drawn as with the other elements in the hut. I can just play this one more time. As you can see here, this is the regular one we have, which is just a waypoint marker. So do you want to explain what the dot means in the middle? Yes, that one, I was about to do that actually, oh. um, <laughs> which is a very good point because we kind of kept it a bit of a hidden thingy uh, when we first revealed the, this, this feature because we didn't really talk about teams of three at that point. Uh, that's now, right. what that dot is, is basically the, the, the number assigned to the respective person in the team. Mm -hmm. So what you can find in these markers is like one, two or three dots. And that references a specific player in the team. Yeah, so that exactly. if you see like uh, two dots in there, you know that your teammate with a two, which could be if you have, for example, the one or the two or the three, it could be any of them, right? It's, it's assigned as a exactly. permanent number uh, uh, on, on the foundation of the team. You can kind of reference that. So you don't need to look, okay, who did place the marker? Like, what is this all about? You can actually make make the connection yourself on this thing. Oh, this was like, uh, it was like uh, like Sven placing this one or mm -hmm. it was number number three or Yannick placed this one. So it gives us a chance to, 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 to have a bit better coordination about who is owning what marker. And then besides the regular marker, obviously, there is still the alert marker, which we see in a second. Um, if you just double click the middle mouse button and it falls the same new style and just gives you a chance to very quickly show that there is like a threat at a window yeah. or there's a bear trap on the ground or whatever. Like usually use that second one whenever you you want to make sure that you don't obfuscate and cover the target afterwards like so it doesn't make any sense to have the regular waypoint marker on a window if you then can't see what's actually behind the window mm. because this marker just doesn't go away with the alert one it just flashes quickly it's gone you can now actually take out the guy behind it exactly. so yeah that's a small thing but still there's very good feedback thank you guys for that and uh, hopefully you like the new style. Exactly. Let me know. Uh, let us know if you like the new style. Let, let me know. <laughs> let me, just tell me when you think of the new style. <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah. Sometimes, but like there are times because people are like, oh, but we just use your micro. And there are times that I'm like on a PC and I just want to play again. I'm like, I can't talk right now, or I'm in a busy <laughs> environment and I'd rather have personally someone pinging than a loud mic and like screaming children in the back not that i don't like children but like screaming children is just like <laughs> <laughs> exactly think but about there's that. more <laughs> think about that um oh wait no, we're going to uh, you got this light the slide. Yep, the slide yeah right got even more so we talked about this a little bit in one of the previous streams, actually, about the new accolades, but we didn't have in the cards yet to show them. Mm -hmm. So this is basically just a collection of the additional accolades. So the accolade cards are the cards that you see at this mission summary at the end of the round that kind of show you and highlight like the big important things that kind of happened and reward you for that. Also keep in mind that with the new blood bond premium currency, you have the chance to kind of like get additional blood bonds from these cards. From so the like if they're bronze, cards. silver, yeah. or a golden trim, they will give you like one, two, three blood bonds respectively which kind of helps you to also 
uh, accumulate more of that premium currency just by playing in order to maybe unlock that cool uh, like weapon, uh, weapon or, or hunter or whatever legendary yeah. skin that you would like to have. Um, so let's start on the top left. So um, do you know them on the top of your head? Yeah, I know them, of course. Yannick. I mean, uh, this is going to be a test. Uh, you know, we'll have the answers now. <laughs> All right. So basically, the, the, the top left ones uh, are related to library unlocks. Um, so the first one is basically that it's a notification that you've unlocked a new entry in the, the, the book of weapons. So that means, for example, you've, you've completed like the challenge to unlock a variation of a weapon. Mm -hmm. Let's say the Romero hand can, for yeah. example. And you would get a notification here, which is a good indicator for you to say, oh, oh I want to check out quickly the store and the library and see what I got there and how I can use this new equipment. Because keep in mind, we mentioned it in the, in the previous stream, no longer is everything unlocked from rank 1 to rank 100 in a linear fashion. It's actually so that only the main weapons, so the Romero, the, the, the rival, the Winfield, they are all there sitting at the, at the rank level still, but their respective variations, so the Marksman version of the Winfield or the Silencer version, etc., they are being unlocked now through a player-driven progression. Mm -hmm. That means basically you are in control what weapons you kind of want to unlock the variations with the priority. So if you don't really care about the Romero, you don't need to work with it. Just focus on the weapon you really want to get, uh, like the specific unlocks for. So if, you, if, you're, if you're an uppercut fan, what a surprise, um, you can just like try to focus on the Colver conversion pistol or to get a chain. I don't think anyone here plays nah, it's just, it's just such a such a such a such a yeah, weird like border case weapon like nobody's <laughs> using it ever right um so you are in control basically and therefore it's very important to at least highlight to the player that uh, like additional weapons are available and then the second one is the mastery levels as you know or you might know from the book of monsters you can also unlock additional challenges with these weapons in order to unlock additional lore pieces so like story snippets etc learn a little bit more about the backstory of the game through the book of monsters on one hand but in this case also the book of weapons and the mastery levels for that so you become an expert in the packs as depicted like depicted here on the on, on the image mm. and again notification for you to understand oh a new entry has been unlocked quickly want to go there mm. and actually uh, read it all and uh, compile it and like just tell everybody about it um, then the next one is actually um, the friendly fire one. So this is something we updated. Um, so whenever you get like an un unfortunate team kill, then this is what you will see. And actually this is a negative one, so you're going to take something away. And the next one is a kill assist. So this is a new feature we're going to talk about in a second, that you'll also be rewarded for that. And then we will be able to uh, like just explain a little bit more in detail. But first, let's go through the other cards. So what we will do uh, next is then, what was that? Is that a question or? It's floating his head. Yep. Um, OK, so basically, um, uh, the next one is, uh, is for the new feature of the trios. So I completely lost my train of thought by being, being bumped up from the side. Like, <laughs> look, 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 this is a good question. Uh, <laughs> Um, train of thought. Focus, Dennis. Now, what we have next is the trio. This is a reward for if you have wiped a team of like a team of three completely, you will get that as an accolade. Basically, it's like a special recognition for going up against the trio and bringing one down. So, as a card for you to earn. And then the complete bottom line is uh, another thing we talked about in the stream before is where we're going to replace the uh, tier based XP rewards for kills with an ELO ranking reference. So if a player is better or roughly a similar skill level uh, than you are, um, they will basically uh, yield more or less XP. Now the accolade cards, they also support that now. So you can see little arrows over there um, and then kind of indicating whether this was a player that was uh, way higher or way below or maybe on a similar level as you are and therefore gives you a different amount. I think if he is very, very low, it's like 50. If he's lower than that, uh, if it's just a little bit low, it's 100. So is this based on the level of the hunter? It's or? not based on the, it's, it's based on the, on the ELO ranking. Okay. So it's just skill based basically. We don't show you exact ELO ranking but, now, but the, the system kind of shows that exactly so yes again a couple of additional things uh, that you can uh, you can uh, like use in order to to like maybe focus on the guys that are worth more which are a bit more better so if they play well very likely if you overcome them you also get a bigger reward than if you if you killed someone who was staring at a wall for two minutes 
Um, okay, then I just mentioned kill assist. So what is this all about? Yeah, what is a kill assist? All kill assist about? is basically a very straightforward mechanic. Like we wanted to give the players a chance that if in the team, like both were shooting at the same guy, obviously one guy gets the kill attributed, but we want to make sure that if you also contribute it, if you also hit or damage the same guy within a short amount of time to mm. the actual kill, you at least get a recognition for a kill assist. It doesn't Especially in a team of three. That's exactly. Team, right? Like so. you kind of compete for the kills. Yeah. Like this was my guy. Yeah. At least now you also get some acknowledgement. Mm. Um, I mean, in the end, it doesn't really matter from the XP point of view because everybody gets the kill XP attributed, right? Mm. There's no race there. Mm. But at least you get a badge saying like, okay, well, I killed three guys, but I also had kill assist for like another yeah. three. So at least I don't feel completely Lost. So, uh, this is actually a special request from myself because I always feel so low when I play with Psycho Ghost and Archie and all of these guys. Because once in a while I get my own kill. Um, so finally I can at least contribute with Kill Assist. So, just joking, obviously. Um, so yeah, Kill Assist is a thing. And there's more. Yeah, so this mm -hmm. is something uh, that is... I think it was a community. Uh, community yeah, community yeah, Obviously, <laughs> in a sense, I mean... In a sense, because because people obviously expect a kill cam, but we don't have a kill cam. Yeah. We have something else. No kill cam, kill cam, but we are clever with the features we have and the resources we have and the abilities of what we can produce. And we put something in which I think you guys will appreciate quite a bit. So but should we just maybe show it and then we explain it? Yeah. In a second. I don't know why it doesn't like me. All right, so you just move around the corner. Oh, what was that? Headshot. Okay, where was he? Oh, he was up there. So what we have now is a kill view option, which is not available if you get downed, but is available when you get killed, killed, killed. So this is only on death, 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 death. This is very important to understand. You will not be able to pinpoint your partner to the position. Mm -hmm. You will be able, however, that when you're completely killed to at least understand and then also learn from uh, what happened there. So seeing the, uh, the stream explode, I think they kind of appreciate <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, so just on the dev screen, it will be available to click on when you're dead, dead, dead. You can toggle between the killer's camera perspective mm -hmm. and the other one. Keep in mind, this is not a snapshot. This is, this is not a recording. This is actually still the live view. So you might actually see people running around that. You might even see your killer moving around there, but you replace a beacon marker at your position where you died and at the markers, uh, mark, like the position of the shooter. And you can kind of use it as a reference point to understand what happened? Uh, what happened so yeah. that maybe next time you go down into the basement you actually shoot left and not right <laughs> all right exactly. so, let's just look at it one more time because i, I feel time. like people are like really excited about it <laughs> heading is an aim moving rounds oh and again kill cam and you see the two positions just toggling in between them you can freely rotate around while you're at the position Obviously, sometimes you might be facing a wall. Sometimes you might be facing uh, like an, an earth dark or for example, with, like with grenade stuff, etc. Like kind of go mm -hmm. with an arc. You won't be maybe always able to fully understand what has happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But for the most part, you at least get a good understanding, and hopefully, it kind of kind of reveals the mystery a little bit afterwards and gives exactly. you gives you an understanding that maybe there was actually a perfectly fine shot and he wasn't cheating from halfway across the map, mm -hmm. but actually there was super legit and maybe uh, everything is good and you should just play better. Exactly. And it is indeed when you're dead, dead, dead. So not when you can still get revived. Yes, this is not for downed players. No. You will only be able to do this when you're dead, 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 dead. And also so, if you got burned dead. Right? Yes, dead, dead, dead. No matter how you die. <laughs> I mean, as people asking, I'm you just can asking You can drown that. for what I care. <laughs> you can drown and be dead, 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 dead. And then another feature. Yes, something which is actually closely linked to this. Can I don't know why that works yeah. for you. But. Damage history. So, I mean, what happened there a second ago? So now you have the option to actually press damage history and it will show you um, the additional hits that you have received directly before your death. So I think it's the last 30 seconds that we record. So I'm going to show this one more time. Yeah. It's so funny. you would just want to vault over there. Yeah, maybe jump down. says, ha, a dentist roof. Yeah, exactly. Although usually I prefer higher roofs, <laughs> Mike. Um, yeah, yeah, we're aware. And and what you can what you can yeah. see now is you can actually uh, um, like understand. You know what? You didn't die from falling. The guy was actually 
hitting you just right before you vaulted over, there goes the spark shot, you fell down, and by looking at the damage history, you see the death blow was falling, but there was a spark sniper shot right before that, and you can have a couple of shots. So you always see like what amount of damage is that you receive mm -hmm. with these shots before, uh, and the timestamps, like how many seconds before they have happened. So again, same with the kill of you, it gives you a chance to kind of like unravel what has happened, uh, how, how, you, how you died basically. And uh, like uh, maybe it solves some of the mysteries where you are so sure that you had 150 hit points, and uh, in no way could that sparks have killed you with one shot because it wasn't a headshot. Now you might understand that actually maybe you got hit right before by another weapon, exactly. and they kind of like just almost were at the same time for you from a perception point of view. But the stats show you clearly it's two shots, and uh, that's why you're dead. Exactly. All right. Okay. Next. Murder mystery, indeed. So killer position, we have some animal tweaks. Yes, animal tweaks. So, animal tweaks, what does it mean? Um, we've basically looked at the, um, specifically the, the ravens and the ducks and the horses. The ones that you find kind of like scattered around the world, not the ones in the, in the, in the cages, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the dens. Um, and one thing that we've noticed with all of the tuning and iterations we've done so far, and I've kind of like moved them closer and closer to, to a bit more readable state, is that there's always a situation that can happen that if you, you and your partner move around very closely, that you think you should not have triggered those birds there, but for some reason they still trigger. The reason for that is shared escalation. So what can happen is that your partner moves past the birds, he doesn't trigger them, but the birds are kind of uneasy already, the escalation is already gone halfway mm -hmm. through. Now you follow him and you just walk through, like if he managed to go through there, I should as well, and all of a sudden the birds go up. You didn't sprint or do anything other than your teammate, it's still kind of mm -hmm. escalated. That's because you never really understood this escalation bar. Mm -hmm. So a change for the animals that we've done is that we put them on an individual escalation level. So basically every player counts on their own against this max level and the animals kind of react to like the, the, the most severe or the strongest escalation. So if, if you and your partner move around there and you are sprinting, your sprinting might actually trigger them. But it's not because of what your partner have done, just solely because you have already escalated them. And this gives us now the chance to do a couple of things that we could not really do before, which is like moving in a in a in a line, basically move following your partner and getting around the environment without these nasty surprises. So here you see some birds on the left side, kind of get uneasy already. Your partner just moves across. You just follow in his footsteps, basically, just move in his tracks, and you start sprinting. When he started sprinting, and everything is fine, no birds have escalated. So rather straightforward. Um, there's like another example we can show. Um, which is uh, again like birds up on the on on the on the on the fence here. So you move on the left side of the track. Normally on live right now you would have triggered the birds, mm -hmm. but as you can see, birds are happy. <laughs> um, you just uh, follow your partner and can actually move around. So what we hope to do with this is that escalation happens because of human error and not because of unclear mechanics. So obviously there are still birds uh, in many places for you to encounter um, and very likely you will still find birds that you didn't see and then you activate them, etc. But at least it shouldn't happen from a situation like this where you're doing nothing wrong or perceived nothing wrong. You're just doing what your partner is doing and all of a sudden the birds still escalated. This is gone now. You can more reliably uh, follow in a, in a trail. Yeah. Indeed. And we have one more. One more with a horsey. So it's the same thing basically as you can see there's a horse getting uneasy and normally again it would have probably triggered by the second player being in range but you can just move around it and no escalation happens you watch where your partner sprints after the old spool you start sprinting as well everything is safe and you're good you are good to go so yeah okay i mean we're just gonna move on we still have a little bit left Flash bomb changes. Oh, a big one. Yeah. Um, so we've already mentioned this, I think, in one of the last streams that we kind of like pulled down the time a little bit and we went even further with some of the changes. So the flash bomb now went down, I think, to it's five seconds, I think, uh, of, of full flash time. So it's, it's like another, I think, one or two seconds or maybe even three seconds taken down from what already reduced version had. Mm. Um, however, we've also added a bit of a ringing uh, like sound as well. So you're actually recover from the from the blinding a little bit earlier like so five seconds so i mean someone play throwing the bomb close by they will still have to drop on you but then again if they would have cooked the dynamite bomb you probably would also be dead um however 
as an offset, you now have a few more seconds where you might not be fully hearing everything around you. It's still recovering, but you can still react to the guy coming around the corner mm -hmm. and um, will therefore be able to respond to this a little bit better. So it's just a balancing adjustment. And I want to see, obviously, how this goes uh, once you guys have a chance to play with this. Indeed. So. so hopefully it will be good when you guys get a chance to try it. So. What is that, Sven? Yeah, we haven't done anything on the sandbox side for a while, right? Yes. So yes. and yeah, I mean, system design came up with a great idea of, I mean, adding a new type of barrel. I mean, you already know that we have the flammable barrel, the oil barrel, right? You can set it on fire. You can, um, yeah set some something in flames or the explosive barrel and we have a, now a new type which <laughs> triggers basically the swarm right the, the green barrel the green barrel i mean we haven't exactly. talked about this already so i think yes, it's a yes. really cool and, and now we can finally show it in motion we can only see what it actually means so shall we exactly let's <laughs> have a look all right, so you can see the barrel in the center of the screen here on the left side now, parked next to the tree. You see some flies uh, above it. Hunter is coming. You use your throwing knife or anything which has uh, physical damage to kind of shred it. It reveals two things, a poison swarm, uh, like a cloud, and actually a hive swarm chasing. So, so combination with the hive bomb and the spider. Exactly. It's, it's, like, it's like the mini pocket spider, and you can use it obviously for distraction. Yeah. So I'm going to play that one more time. Uh, it's basically an additional option where just shooting at this uh, and again you can even use a decoy I think to break it so like mm -hmm. it's very fragile yeah. like just need some physical force uh, like a crossbow bolt etc so it kind of actually helps with a with the silence weapons a little bit yeah. and then obviously like the guy as you can see like you can you can do something against the swarm now with melee attacks kind of like make it disappear faster we've talked about this before and uh, use it as a distraction in order to do a nice little uh, shoulder throwing knife kills. I see a lot yeah. of people already mentioning stuff in the Discord. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the in the chat. Yeah, they do. That's, yeah. that's really Could weird. I mean, <laughs> I would say before you know do anything, there's still some. Yeah, let's let's go through the rest because I think. <laughs> Whatever the other distraction might actually be about, it's not going to be as awesome as we're going to talk about right now. Exactly. So, uh, procedural words. Something yes. that you guys have mentioned before was that you guys wanted more than just, you know, a level 15, a level 100 because weak link. No. <laughs> what 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 prestige level are you again? I'm not prestige at all. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't care about prestige. I don't need no skins. <laughs> I'm not about that, you know, all those appearance things. I just like it. Yeah. Anyways. Oh. All right. But so, uh, yeah, we have been working on more prestige rewards. Yes. So yeah. we we have we have uh, three additional prestige rewards that we're adding. So when we say prestige rewards, these are pre these are basically legendary content that will be exclusive to prestiging. Mm -hmm. So far, we had a, a prestige reward that was exclusive for prestige level fifty and for the new uh, uh, prestige level 100. So it's two things. But obviously, getting to 50 can take quite some time. You can talk to Failspawner about how long this takes. Yeah. Uh, he can probably tell you a little bit about this. And But we thought we want to give you a little bit earlier. So let's just show them, I would say. They're yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, let's go. So hold them back. So we have the Luciana Lustrum, which is the prestige five reward. So for the first five pre prestigious, you have this thing to work towards. Um, this will be the guaranteed exclusive uh, thing you will get on prestige level five. Obviously, everybody who has prestiged already we'll at least to five default. will get that by default once we roll out the, uh, the, the prestige rewards uh, for uh, everybody else as we go uh, on live eventually. Um, now we have another shot of the same weapon. As you can see, like uh, with the Lustrum, like as a nice reference to uh, obviously the number five in there, five strokes on it. Ike has done a lot of really awesome work uh, on this particular one here, and yeah, so this is exclusive. So you can really show off that I've I've done it. I've prestiged five times, and this is what I have to show for, and it's on a T-shirt. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is Prestige 10, <laughs> and that is the Golden Ticket. Um, so basically, uh, it's a, it's a Golden Line weapon where uh, if you prestiged 10 times, you get a, a nice little Bornheim number three. Um, and we showed you both sides on here because it's really, really cool to look, see it from, 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 from both angles, um, which is the exclusive reward if, you, if you've prestiged at 10 times, which is already quite a big achievement. And then we have 
one more, which is the Quart Derringer, the I Silver mean, Quarter. I think this is great. <laughs> I hope everyone. I do love the little engravings as well. Like yeah, the little, little hand, little hand yeah. logo is here, even it's so. Very cute. So for for cute. for Prestige Twenty Five, you get the Silver Quarter, and uh, that one is actually uh, a pretty awesome one. Like if you manage to get a kill with that on a guy, I mean, you definitely left a mark there. I also <laughs> love that we have it for the quarter, as in Twenty Five Quart. Quad Derringer is that you know on? Oh, what is that? Well, because like quad quarter. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the wordplay of words, you know. <laughs> so deep, so. I deep. mean, I'm pretty sure that is their reason. Absolutely, but absolutely. I'm just saying. Yep, and the color scheme is like a quarter, so it's it's, it's all, all like it all that. comes I together. Mean, I know you young ladies don't know what quarters are, but back in our day, we had those twenty-five cent coins. <laughs> So yeah, three additional um, uh, prestige rewards uh, that can be obtained a little bit earlier than the 50 and the 100 ones we've shown you guys earlier, like in the previous stream already. So again, a request from you guys after the stream. So so not only do we have like five streams to go through all of the features, we even use the later streams to actually show you what we do on top because you already given us feedback in earlier streams. I mean, exactly. it's like amazing. Yeah, we have already. Yeah, exactly. Because like when we did the stream, it was like a few weeks ago and then we just... yeah. Pump so should we do some some question stuff then? Yeah, so I have a few questions already uh, lined up. Uh, we're just going to go through a few that I have written down and yeah. maybe one or two still from the chat because obviously there might be something waiting afterwards. Uh, so for the tutorial, I had two really good questions. Uh, will it be thought about weapon effectiveness? For example, the axe being strong against a butcher, a fire being good against a fire uh, against a spider or assassin? Yes, actually, uh, this is something which we're teaching already, and we've done some some more balancing with 1.0. That if you select your contract, you see what the target is of the contract, mm -hmm. and you see like the strength and weaknesses of this target and what you have to consider. Uh, specifically with the new frenzy mode that we've added to all of them so like they kind of play a bit differently and yes you definitely see with the target there what is the preferred strategy what you should maybe use like for example poison kind of is a nice thing against the assassin fire is a good thing against the spider um, that type of stuff so yes that is in, that is information which is in the game already right now and we've kind of taken the next step up um, with the improved UI exactly uh, will there be more streamlined tutorials as well as such as showing the buttons and giving general tips during an actual match? We actually do that. Um, so this is something we we already do with 6.0. But it's because people don't have, when they're already like... Exactly. So 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 if you already have like prestige, etc., then um, you don't see that. But as a new player mm -hmm. uh, with 6.0, you already had contextual hints that yeah. kind of showed you, oh, you're, you're close to your first clue. This is what you need to take care of right now. This is what you, uh, you're approaching the, 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 the butcher's lair. This is what you have to, you have to keep in mind. Now, what we've been doing for 6.0 is that we've improved on that system a lot more like we've added additional contextual hints in there we kind of rephrase them a little bit specifically with the new offline tutorial we talked about earlier so everything has been streamlined and the contextual hints are a very important part of mm -hmm. the tutorial in order to guide the player through the next steps and understand mm -hmm. like what they should do what they should look for controls as well as uh, like what happens around them like if someone else picks up the bounty mm -hmm. etc yeah. so exactly. yeah exactly um why would looting uh oh but why would looting a hunter give you double the money than actually looting a boss family? because it's risky of course you need to kill them and obviously it's also chance based i mean there's a yes. very 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 low chance for you how, to get a thousand. how much like percentage i can't is. tell you that <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah. but those who have had the chance to maybe once in a while even five already a five hundred, no, 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 um, no, they know no. it's gonna be very very <laughs> rare, um, and obviously a thousand is, is is following the same logic, right? Like you won't find a thousand around every corner. And actually, and that's uh, maybe a little bonus information. The same is true for cash registers. You can also, if you find a cash register, now have a very very low chance to find that. Again. The chances to find that is very low. For the most part, you will just get like your 50, right? Like, I guess like 99% of the time. Um, but then once in a while, you can get these additional steps and even have the chance to win the lottery, basically, by having a thousand. And then the real dilemma is like, will you continue with the mission or will you just try to bring this one home? Exactly. Uh, I see some quick questions. Yes, we will get a, a special skin for people that play during early access. Yes. 
Champions store. Yes, we have, we have a Champions store called the Benefactor, which is exclusive for everybody. That exactly. Has and the, even if we have certain, or like, even if we don't have skins for certain weapons right now, uh, there will be more skins in the future. So, very uh, likely. obviously, they, they can only make so many so fast. And we have already done an amazing job to make a few more new prestige weapons. So. Yeah, and, and the good thing is, like, you can you can just play to unlock them, right? I mean, exactly, so, so they're yeah. bound to the new premium currency, the Blood Bones we have. And while you can also obviously purchase them in packs, later on um they will be um also a rewards for playing like either completing like weekly challenges yeah. or etc and there were actually a couple of 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 of, of fears about like but uh, is this not like uh, pay to win uh, when it comes to the convenience features and uh very clearly what we've what we stated is that there's nothing you can use that currency for which gives you an advantage in the in-game mm -hmm. mission like everything is about convenience like for example reshuffling hunters etc so there's a higher chance maybe to get the hunter with a specific weapon or a specific trade you are looking for mm -hmm. but this is nothing you cannot just like through playing also unlock so in this regard uh, it's just convenience and the visuals so that should be perfectly fine exactly uh well uh, what if i die completely oh so yeah so with the kill uh information yes if we if i were to play with a partner and i completely die can i already see that information no your teammate has to have died as well exactly. so so it has to be a team wipe before that gray box then becomes a clickable button yeah because someone said oh but what if i can give my information to my partner that is yeah, not possible no. because that's not awesome. the idea of this feature is to give you information after basically the match is concluded for you you just yeah. to reveal the mystery to kind of unlock a little bit of what has happened but not to give you any in-game advantages exactly and the toggle aim assist option will come to xbox in the that future. is correct yeah uh, and if I loot 1,000 and someone else kills me, will they be able to loot that 1,000? No, nope. <laughs> nope. Magically, you will have taken that into hell with you. Um, it's like it burned <laughs> with your body because... Yeah. No. It, it follows the same mechanic as, as usual, right? Like, so the money that you, you kind of... Um, the money that you kind of kind of kind of find from corpses uh, if you loot other players or from the cash registers mm -hmm. that's living on you temporarily if you manage to get out alive you keep that on top of whatever you've earned in the mission if you die well it's lost in the swamps and uh, but maybe someone looting you might be lucky to also find money but it's it's always a completely new reroll like is this not like that just because you found something earlier that they now take it from you exactly. because anyways you wouldn't know any like like anyways whether it's the case so it doesn't really matter Exactly. Uh, and you see some people, yes, if you get a skin or unlock a skin, you get one free version for that weapon, so to say, just like you have when, you know, you unlock a weapon in the bloodline, you get one free version, and then afterwards you just buy the weapon like you buy in the store, you know, you buy the base weapon technically, but then it will look like uh, the legendary, the legendary version. Um, mm, mm, mm. let's do one more question and then go to the next slide. Yeah. Um, mm, 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 mm. Well, I mean, we can maybe ask this question. Will 1.0 reach stats before launch? <laughs> I think it makes sense for us to do that. So um, we really, really need a test server period because that gives us the chance to get feedback. And exactly. um, 26 pages of changelog, which I've heard might actually be available right now, um, might require I've heard some, some rumors. Might, might, I might have some rumors, might actually require quite some in depth testing. So what's important is that for, for the test server period, is that this is going to be different than what we had before. Like exactly. so, we've yeah. we've we've done a lot of updates in the past, and we've had our tester, but we're now moving to 1.0. We we're, we're basically about to leave our early access period. It's it's, it's a big release. milestone. It's a big milestone for this game, and as such, 1.0 is. Uh, beast of an update there's so much in there completely new features uh, changes convenience features bug fixes everything and we need you guys we need your time a lot of your time in order to go and play the crap out of this we need you to go on the test servers uh, be able to play this we would like to get progression testing so that we see like you guys coming back to the test server continuously also because that way we can see how quickly are you leveling up like is there a problem with the money? Is, is the money we fine? Will, What's sir. the unlocks? Yes. Basically, um, so we're relying on you, our community, our awesome, awesome, awesome community to help us with this process because the test server needs to be populated. And yeah. um, we talk a little bit about more, more in, in, in the future, how we go about doing some of that stuff. But for starters, because I think technically they can do this right now <laughs> because we're right now live for the test server. Exactly. 
Go there, download, play, 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 and then post the feedback. Give us feedback. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us everything because we need to like know. Also, we like to know like, <laughs> things you like. But yeah, uh, also in general, like everything is on a desk server except for the legendary content. That's the only thing that we still not have. The legendary content even is also on the test server. Wait, what? Um, but that's 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 a caveat here. So we do not have the pre the the, the blood. I would lie to. You. <laughs> the blood bonds is 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 basically not something you can yet like purchase etc yeah, yeah, yeah. but what we do for the purpose of the test server we give everybody a bit of blood bonds like mm -hmm. a certain amount so that you guys can start experimenting with this obviously this will not carry over into into life and final release etc <laughs> this is in the test server lives in the yeah. test server um what happens on the test server stays on the test server and for that purpose um you can experiment with this already and this is also very important for us because that way we can get feedback we understand like what are the legendary unlocks you would for example like uh, prefer what are what are certain mechanics you would really like to have more of and it's just very important for you to just explore and uh, understand what 1.0 actually means all 26 pages of it yeah and uh then report back and give us you, you give us your opinion give us your thoughts and uh share your feedback so that we can react on it because exactly. that's what we want to do exactly because we still have our launch plan on the 27th of august so we still have some time as you can tell we have almost a month uh to gather all your feedback and you know make some additional changes and also something i want to share with you guys because uh someone named kitira she has already been working on her first female hunter cosplay and it looks really really awesome so she will share it on her channels uh, i don't have them right here but if you just check her out i, I just want to give a shout out because it looks really really cool Free so good definitely stuff. give it give it I, I really actually want to do a female hunter cosplay one day but <laughs> i'm not i mean i did a cosplay once but it's so much money and so much time <laughs> i don't have the space for it but it would be cool if we can do like a we just make dennis a hunter he could be the butcher right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Like i mean I, 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 got, I got i got the, the face pie. i got the face for it right <laughs> you got just got a bigger mustache uh, on that it, butcher you mean all oh, right <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought it was that? Wow, I mean, that's right. self-disappointing. <laughs> go, anyway. go on the test server, have fun, yeah. play, um, break the servers, uh, make sure we find all the bugs so we can squash them out and improve. Uh, keep in mind, though, this is the first step on test server, which means mm -hmm. there will be certain things which are rough. We have a big change log, ideally, maybe while downloading, etc. read through the change log. It will be linked uh, in, in like the Steam release, etc. Read through the stuff, make sure you understand what is there, what will come later, what where there are still issues with, etc. Yeah. And uh, yeah, enjoy yourselves. Let us know. And uh, definitely like go to the Discord, go to Steam, preferably Discord. Discord is a great place. I like Discord. Go play! <laughs> whoa, 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 Anyways, okay. Thank you guys for watching and uh, have fun. Bye! Ciao!